When you think of horrible fighting games, what is the first thing that comes to mind? Is it Multiverses, Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl, or maybe even the latest Mortal Kombat 1? I think those are all amazing picks, but I think everybody as a whole can agree that the worst fighting game known to man has to be J On the day of February 14th of 2019, we got a release date for Jump Force, probably one of the most anticipated anime fighting games in a long time. Prior to this game, we had J-Star's Victory Versus, which was pretty much Jump Force, but a lot better than it actually is. With a lot of these iconic IPs clashing together in one game, many people were speculating on how great this game can be. There is no way the developers behind Jump Force could even flop with with the amount of IPs that they have on this game. Or so we thought. As soon as this game released, many people saw all the flaws right away. It had a terrible story, the combat was way too simplistic, and the playable characters do not feel unique at all. There was barely any DLC, and if you wanted a really cool move, you had to rely on RNG for certain drop rates. And sadly enough for me, I was foolish enough to pre-order this game without waiting for the reviews. You're a fucking idiot. And with that came the disappointment of me knowing that I paid $60 at the time for a very shitty video game. But I wasn't just going to delete it, so I decided to play throughout the whole game and I hated it. But I would be lying if I said that there wasn't some things that I loved about this game. So in today's video, we'll be doing a brief overview of Jump Force, which then led to the decision of me never pre-ordering another game again. So sit back, relax, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy the video, and let me explain to you how Jump Force could have been great. Now when it comes to video games, me personally, I would rather have a better gameplay experience than graphics. And obviously Jump Force did the exact opposite. As you can tell, they kind of went for the more realistic look, and they kind of nailed it, honestly. Now regardless of how you feel about the gameplay, you cannot deny that they made the characters look amazing in this game. Each character in the roster looks like they were pulled out right from their anime and brought into this game. If you wanted to see how a semi-realistic anime character would look, this is it. This is the game. Graphics wise, this game was set. Nobody was complaining about the graphics, at least me personally. I could see if people wanted a more traditional looking anime game, but they took the risk and it personally looks good. I've never seen an anime fighting game go for such an authentic style. The graphics easily capture the distinct art styles from the multiple anime series, which maintains the authenticity and paying homage to the source material. It's kind of like how Sakurai does it with Smash Bros, how he brings in characters outside from the normal Nintendo realm, but somehow still brings them in and makes them feel very authentic to the game. Even though these characters look amazing while standing idle, as soon as they get into the gameplay, it looks horrible. Now as you can see, the gameplay looks awesome as they're just standing still, but as soon as they start fighting, it's just gonna be a bunch of flashing lights. Jump Force, unfortunately, is one of those video games where it's more fun to watch rather than play. But the problem that leads to that is nobody wants to play this game because it actually isn't fun. In fact, it's so not fun that the people that you see fighting right now are two computers. I am not willfully playing this game. The gameplay can feel very oversimplistic and repetitive at times, pretty much relying heavily on basic combos and button mashing without any depth or strategy. And if you haven't noticed yet, on the bottom left and right corner of the screen, those rings indicate how many times you can parry. So if that ring goes down to zero, get this, you can no longer parry. It would make sense if the ring was mainly used for for blocking and for dashing that part I would understand but to parry and with every fighting game comes a very unbalanced character roster whenever it comes to any fighting game of course there will always be the one character that is better than the rest and the only way to fix that problem is to either nerf that character or buff the rest of the others and that was the exact problem that jump force ran into they didn't update shit and despite featuring such a large roster of characters the available combos and movesets can feel so 
limited and very uninspired, which end up resulting in repetitive and very predictable gameplay. And not to mention the very inconsistent hitbox. And there is no DI from what I've know in this game. So how are normally consistent combos not being consistent? I think a huge problem stems with the fact that Jump Force wanted to be a very cool and open arena fighter. And they could have done that. But at the end of the day, they chose a very weird fighting system that nobody liked. I've made a severe and continuous laps in my judgment. If there is one thing that I could fix with this game, it would definitely be the ring system. Just get rid of it. And I have no problem with arena fighters because I absolutely love Xenoverse 2 and Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm 4. It just sucks seeing something that could have been great that ended up being something so insignificant that nobody wants to talk about it. And before we move on to the story, I just want to show one more piece of gameplay that I truly despise. If you choose Sanji from One Piece and go up against any female character, you will do zero damage. Anytime you try to attack, you will always do this move. I think it's a pretty funny gag, in all honesty, and it's pretty base that Sanji doesn't want to hurt women. But sir, you are in a fighting game. If you are the last one standing, how are you going to defend yourself? Alright, that's enough of the gameplay. Now let's move on to the interesting part, which is the story mode. Yay! I'm gonna be honest with you, the story mode is pretty shit, so I'm gonna go through it really fast. The story begins with the player's avatar, aka us, being rescued by Goku, Luffy, and Naruto, aka the big three. We discover that we've been imbued with special powers because of a mystical artifact called the Umbris Cube. After that, the Jump Force organization is formed to combat the Venoms, who are led by a powerful villain named Kane and his ally, Galena. After all that, you pretty much just do a bunch of missions, upgrade your character, do more missions, and pretty much rinse and repeat. You get to the end boss, you beat him, and that's pretty much it. Now that we're done talking about the story, I want to focus on my favorite part of this game, and that would have to be the character customization. Now with the character customization, I think they did a really good job with it. Not only were you able to customize your character any way you want, but you can customize them so they look like they're from your favorite anime. Especially with the time of DLC on the rise, I was actually genuinely surprised that you can get a bunch of clothing for free if you just play the game. So they at least get my respect for not having any microtransactions for clothes. But I think the one thing that outshines the actual clothing in this game has to be the accessories. With accessories, you'll be able to wear such iconic iconic clothing such as Luffy's hat for some reason is on your back, Goku's halo from Dragon Ball Z, Asta's sword from Black Clover, and so many more. The character customization in this game does a very good job in expressing on how you want to look. And at the end of the day, you get to make a beautiful creation like this. Speaking of beauty, the last thing I want to talk about in this video is the atmosphere that this game provides. Each main character in the game gets their very own hub world. And to start off, we have the Hidden Leaf Village from Naruto. It is faithfully recreated down to the minute detail. I mean, they even have Ichiraku Ramen right in the back. Overall, I would have to give this mini hub world an 8 out of 10. And the only reason it's getting an 8 out of 10 is because there's no good characters to interact here. It is empty. Naruto is not in his own hub world. What is this? Hey, future me here. Uh, so my blind ass didn't see Naruto in that little back corner right there yep there he is in all his glory so the new rating for naruto's world a 10 out of 10. the next world that we'll be talking about is none other than goku himself i think this would have to be my favorite hub world overall not only is the hub world placed in the legendary battle where goku and vegeta first fought but you could also talk to goku the man himself so not only can you talk to your favorite anime protagonist ever, you can also pose with him and show how much you love him. So with that being said, I'm giving this hub world a 10 out of 10. Thank you, Goku, for letting me pose with you. And last but not least, we have Luffy's world. Even though I've never seen One Piece, I really do like the atmosphere here. I think they did a really good job in showing how beautiful this series can be. And also how big the boat is. God damn. You could even talk to Deku. Oh god. Oh, you could even talk to Luffy. So overall, I'll give this hub world a 9 out of 10. Okay, I lied. There's one more thing I want to talk about quick, and that's the stages. 
When it comes to stages, sadly, there's nothing really good about them. Even though they all actually look very different, they're all the same at the end of the day. Does that make sense? But I will say this. My favorite map has to be the San Francisco one. Having both of the statues from Naruto near the San Francisco bridge, that shit is beautiful. But when it comes to longevity, sadly, this game did not last long. It was so bad that they ended up pulling the entire game offline. So you can no longer get the DLC characters or even play online anymore. Which is probably for the best because this game is ass. And with that being said, the only thing to do now is delete this game from my system and hopefully the next time they make a game like this, they nail it. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you made it this far, make sure you leave a like and subscribe because that really does help out the channel and would mean so, so, so much to me. And as always, a huge shout out to all my current channel members that are subscribed on my YouTube. That extra support really does mean a lot to me and I cannot thank you enough. But with that being said, that is going to be it for this video. Let me know down in the comments how you feel about Jump Force. Do you think they should make a second one? Should they make a comeback like Multiverses did? Let me know down below. But with that being said, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Stay healthy, stay safe, stay hydrated. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Adios.